to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for September 10th, 2018. The first thing we have is a first hearing under RSA 4114A for number 2 8th Street, map 197, lot 39, release deed restriction. Number 3, no fences may be erected upon such premises other than ornamental fencing, no uh, no than three foot in height. Petition, petitioner request a deed release for the number three for the fencing at number 28th Street property. We are looking to replace an existing three foot fence with a four foot fence. This will be a fence in ornamental nature, and the reason to request is to prevent their dogs from jumping over the fence into the neighbor's yard. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to you. You don't need to bring it to anybody, Mr. Chairman. All I have to do is read this, ask if there's public input, and then if there is not, you can recess this hearing and move on. We will recess this hearing at 7.07. Public comment. Is there anybody that would like to speak public comment tonight? Hi. Yes, ma'am. Just come right up here and, and just tell us your name and, and address. Yeah, your name and address, please. I'm Deborah Dubas, and I own the property at 28th Street. And basically, it's just what it says there. The f I have pictures of the fence that we're going to purchase if you want to see it. It's basically the same as what's there, except it's four feet high instead of three. Okay. I think, I think we don't have any questions, so it'll be. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, but, great. Well, now, just what happens is we mm -hmm. have to have. Be two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight, we'll have an, a second hearing. Okay. And then if anybody wants to speak, your neighbors or yourself, again, if you want to speak, yes. you come back, speak. Mm -hmm. And then the, the meeting after that, we will decide, we will make our recommendations. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else from public comment that would like to speak? <laughs> Seeing none, announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise. Um, at the request of uh, former Senator Nancy Stiles, I want to bring to the public's attention in the next couple of weeks the Hampton Beach Area Master Plan Transportation Update. The hearing will be at 7 p.m. on the 26th of uh, September at the Marston School, and we hope everybody comes to join in and fine-tune. The whole plan is all here um thank you um hey, actually on that is it possible that it hasn't already been done that we could put that plan up on the town website for people to look at well, we have it i think we do yeah, okay we can do that all right great thank you just mostly vote and, and come and participate yeah. and i just want to remind everyone two things um tomorrow is the primary so please get out and vote it's at marston school yes yes Okay, and also, I'm going to be attending that New England Waterworks Association conference, so I'm leaving on Sunday. So I just wanted to remind the board that I will not be here for next Monday's meeting. Okay. And that's all I have. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, it was a busy weekend in town. The <laughs> Seafood Festival was around. A lot of people in town, a lot of people visiting the beach. Uh, a little chilly yesterday, but uh, warm weather's coming back, and the beach season's not over. Rick? No, and mine is just, and mine also is to remind everybody that the uh, primary is tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> so the 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, hopefully everybody gets out and exercises their right. We do need a schedule from the board of where your members are going to attend. We'll do that on the old business? Yes, sir. Okay. You had something? Nope. Okay. I was going to say just exactly what the I, 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 I had that on my I, I, I was sure you did. So, next thing we have is the approval of the minutes, August 27th, 2018, non-public session. I'll move those. Motion by Rick, seconded by Mary Louise. All those in favor? Unanimous. 
Now we have August 27th public session. I'll so move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. There. Okay, we have a consent agenda. We have a coin operated amusement device. We have Carol Shea Porter request an open office hours at the town office. We have number five, eight street modification for deed restriction. We have 15 Epping Avenue modification of deed restriction. And we have the NHDES wetlands permit for 175 Island Path. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a question on five. Um, we, we keep, uh, we keep uh, giving away to all these consents in the wetlands. I mean, we've got enough problems with flooding. Did you want to take that off the consent? Yes, you want to take that off? Yes. Okay, so we'll take that one off consent. How about the rest of the consent agenda? I just have one quick question. Okay. Five, uh, three and four, those are the ones we had the public hearings on? Yes. yes okay, sir. cool. I'll move that. Move I'll those. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mary Louise, you want to talk about number five? Uh, oh, unless we have some really outstanding information, I, I'm just getting concerned about all these wetlands permits, especially at the beach. It, it it's just not going to drain down there, and you've got a lot more flooding in, in coming up, I guess. Uh, I'm just concerned about that. Here's the wetlands permit uh, application. Um, they want to build a, a um, structure, a shed, 12 feet by 8 feet within the existing boundary, and it will be installed within 20 feet of town property. These, these lots are small, and I get complaints all the time from people who live down there about the failure of drainage to come about properly because there more, there's more and more impervious surface down there. The waters just don't drain away. So I, I'm not in favor of it. The vote can, vote, the board can do what it will, but I'm... I, well, I just want to say that it's sort of hard because this is all these other plans have already been approved. Is that what is going on here? That's what I was going to ask too. Has this gone be before the the conservation committee, yes, sir, and the planning board and stuff? Yes. And they gave the approval. That's correct. Okay. Conservation committee reviewed it. Yes. And this that they, they have to be in compliance with the ordinance, so they okay. have to be in compliance with the, the tidal flow and, and level of land and level of water and so forth. So I make a motion that we approve it. Chair, a second? Second. All those in favor? I'm Four. Opposed. One opposed. Okay. Next we will have appointments. Renee yeah. Boudreau. Hey. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. So as I'm doing my homework and sending out the RFPs for our one article that was approved this year, um, I've come back with a couple of issues with both little projects, so I'm asking for some uh, help with these issues. Um, the first one of the two was a fencing project. Um, we did some homework, we got estimates. Some came back really, really high, some came back super low, um, and we found out that a really legitimate estimate came in at the $15,095 mark, literally $95 over the policy. So I'm kind of asking for some leeway on that one. Uh, it's super solid estimate. We didn't go out to bid on that because we thought we could get some estimates around or under the $15,000 mark. So that's the big one there. With the Kids Kingdom project, we put out the RFP for $100,000 as our max. Um, the Warren article between the two, the total comes out to 131 and change. Mm -hmm. um, the lowest bid we got for the Kids Kingdom project was 116, 188. So between the two, we still come in underneath what the Warren article was approved for. It's just that the allotment of the money is not what we didn't expect the fence to be as low as we could we got the estimate for we thought it was going to be closer to twenty five thirty thousand dollars and that's not the case and the playground it is what it is we hope to get a hundred thousand dollars they couldn't really come close 
um, the second company that bid was $156,000. So it's kind of a, uh, I mean, we don't have endless money in that one article, obviously. So we're trying to make do with what came in for the bids. But what have we got as a total to accomplish this? The total for the two jobs on the one article was $130. Thirty-one thousand eight fourteen, and the um, fence job was fifteen thousand ninety-five, and the playground was one sixteen one eighty-eight, and combined it, it comes in like two three hundred dollars under the max for the Warren article. Okay. okay. While we have you as well, we, why don't we, we stick to this first yeah. so we go well, around well, and everybody's got a chance to. But talk. it's on Kids Kingdom. But. Let's oh, all right. Stick to I'll just do an article for it. Go ahead. Richard. I have no problem. I'm ready to approve this as he's needed. To I have no it. problem. And just, just so the people watching know, Kids Kingdom is where? It's the playground over at Tuckfield. Probably the most used playground. By far the most used playground and in town. How old is it? I believe it's 22 years old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rick, any questions? No. Overdue. So we have a mo Well, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Okay, I just just have one quick. You can have, after we get the, the motion, you can ask a question. So I don't want, I don't have a question. I just want to point some and ask Renee to point something out for the public so they understand. Okay. In the course of this project, if would you describe what you're going to be doing to show the donors who originally contributed for Kids Kingdom? Mm -hmm. And you said you're not going to have a signboard. You're going to have a, a different approach. If you would just describe it, because the people are interested they paid money toward that right the original uh, donor board was replaced or I should say was replaced it was taken down we bought a new one a couple of years ago and yeah. it was never put back up okay the goal is to put it back up but I don't want to put it up until well we get approval for this but I don't want to put it up before we do construction and realize I need to move it and put it in a different location for some reason right so I'd like to get the project done realize the best spot for that sign and then put it back up okay so I, I just want to reassure the the voters and the taxpayers that this will be done and it's right on your to-do yes. list yes all right okay. very good thank you Mary Louise so we have a motion in the second all those in favor unanimous that was hard. It was easy. <laughs> It'll make you work harder next time. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his new desk. He can do anything. Next person we have is Phil Johnson from Unitil Gas. Yeah. Sure. Either way, either there or there. Either. Uh, good evening. My name's Phil Johnson with Unitil Gas. Um, I'm here to request a waiver on paving moratorium for three addresses in Hampton, um, 521 High Street, 230 Exeter Road, and 232 Exeter Road. Um, the two, two uh, addresses on Exeter Road are new, new builds, and High Street is an existing property or existing house. Any questions, Mary Louise? Yeah, so is this, you want the permit because you're going to be cutting into the hot top before a five-year yes. thing is up. Yep. Okay, so you'll need to actually make the cut. Exactly. They both, actually all three properties, the cut is right at the edge of the pavement. It's outside of the fog line. Okay. So we're not going to be in the travel way, but we are cutting okay. the Okay. And you just try to put it back as close as yep. you can to the good. Yep. Okay. Any questions? I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, correct. The uh, Public Works Department has approved the request. Okay. Uh, the amount of interference with the pavement is, is mild. It's the, it does not go beyond the fog line, the white line, and the edge of the road, is my understanding. So, cool. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to allow I'll make a motion? I'll, I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Great. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Good deal. Tell me your report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and this is a long report. I have the whole pile of stuff has come in since we started this process. Uh, the board and all residents are invited to the uh, rededication of the Global War and Terrorism Memorial Monument on Tuesday, September 11, 2018, at post number 35 of the American Legion, which is uh, at 69 High Street. Activities will begin at 6 p.m. 
Uh, tomorrow is the state primary election from uh, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Marston uh, School on High Street. The State Department of Transportation will be holding an informational meeting on Wednesday, September 26th at 7 p.m. at the Marston School to introduce the Hampton Harbor Bridge Project. The first day to file petitions to amend the zoning ordinance is November 12th, 2018. The last day is December 12th, 2018. That's November 12th to December 12th. The last day to file a petition for an article in the 2019 Annual Town Meeting is Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. You can see we're getting close to the end of the year here. <laughs> They're already putting the dates out in the Yeah, dance. yeah, winter's coming. Uh, there is going to be a meeting, and board members are certainly issued. Uh, you can go if you wish. Uh, this is from the uh, Health Trust. Their annual meeting and board elections will be December 6, 2018 at 9 a.m. in the offices at Triangle Park in Concord. And they'll be setting rates and other things at that, that, that particular meeting. And uh, as information comes in, we'll make sure you get that so that you can, if you decide to go, you can. Uh, the Aquarium Water Company has begun the process of cleaning mains. Tomorrow they're going to do um, a whole host of mains off of um, Toll Farm and Merrill and Drakeside and Hampton Meadows and Lafayette the High and Winniconnet Road, Toll Avenue, Maplewood, um, and a lot of the streets off of, um, well, Everything up around Heather Lane, Evergreen, Longwood, Carolyn. All those streets are going to be, all those mains are going to be drawn out and cleaned tomorrow. So if, if you have a problem with, because of their cleaning and flushing the mains, they're, they're trying to get residual that may be deposited in the mains over a period of time, trying to get that out. Uh, if you have a problem, please run your water for a while just mm -hmm. until it runs clear. If it doesn't run clear after a short period of time, call Aquarian. Mm -hmm. So they'll know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, this is this is their project and on their main. So it's important that you uh, keep an eye on what you're doing. And if your water is dirty, please do not wash clothes. Uh, <laughs> that can be a, a real I, problem. If I had a main, I'd worry about it. I understand. You don't have a main, yeah. <laughs> Which can be interesting. Uh, the... Tax collector has asked me to announce that her office is going to be closed on Wednesday, September 19th. I'll do this again at our next meeting. They are required to, to attend an annual conference and training with the state of New Hampshire. Uh, town clerk's office is closed tomorrow because of the election. All of her people will be yeah. at the polls. This gets to be a, that time of the year. Political signs, uh, display, uh, there, there are statutes, uh, there are rules. Uh, after the election tomorrow, if whoever is not elected to go on to the, uh, the, the, uh, elect the big election uh, must remove their signs in accordance with the statute. Please put signs on private property, putting them on town property, on town highways. <coughs> uh, the state highways are different, but on town highways is not allowed by statute. Uh, we do remove them, and we make sure that uh, they're out back. If, if we remove them, we put them out back for a week following the election. You can pick them up there. Uh, if we haven't removed them, then somebody else has, whether it's the state or some private individual. Uh, we don't have control over that. Uh, there is an ordinance, a town ordinance, with regards to political signs and, and uh, for the primaries and elections, and uh, it is part of uh, the sign ordinance which is section 5.5.7 of the town ordinances. And I suggest it's online. I suggest people read it so they understand what it is. The state statute is RSA 660. Uh, I don't want to give you the wrong statute. 6, 664, section 17. It deals with town rights away, and it deals with um, state rights away. Hmm. You cannot place a sign in a town right away. That's against the law. Uh, and you can't uh, erect a sign on a pole or some other uh, signpost or whatever. Those, those we remove as quickly as we find them. Uh, there will be a discussion at some point in time, a preliminary discussion uh, with the chief of police uh, regarding emergency management. As soon as they get all the information they need from the CDC and the State Department of Public Health, 
they're preparing for that now. There will be an announcement, I understand, tomorrow from CDC and State Health on, on uh, some of the additional testing that they have done. Uh, water quality, uh, daily updates, uh, we don't receive those from the state of New Hampshire unless they deal with a specific problem like the Legionnaires problem. Uh, they are on the state's website and we'd have to chase them down as well. This, these are uh, announcements from them on whether or not particular areas are closed off to swimming because of contamination. We only get those that pertain to Hampton and we usually get those uh, late evening, so we post them the following morning. And we usually end up taking them down the following afternoon because it's just a momentary thing. Um, we had a question uh, with regards to um, the schedules given to the auditors. The auditors are looking to close out uh, our audit for the year. Uh, and yes, we have filed with them a complete um, legal letter with regards to the position of Hampton on any of our legal questions and legal cases. That's a confidential document. It's not available for public content, um, but it's required so that we can set the reserves that are required in the statute yeah, for a particular case if it hasn't been settled. And we do keep reserves for that. We, uh, I know that uh, Regina is going to go to the NHMA <coughs> rundown on legal legislation and, and their votes, which are coming up. Uh, quite quickly here, uh, and I'm pretty sure she's going to ask for your input if yeah. you haven't already given it. Yeah, I know. I've actually gone through, well, I've gone through all of them, and I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. makes sense. I did have a couple questions, which I'm going to just have the town manager and assistant town manager look over to make sure we shouldn't ask them to add anything or things like that, because I figure if I'm going to be there voting for the board, I just want to make sure that we do it properly. The first time I went, it was my first year as a selectman, so you know I was a little bit thrown in the middle. Behind the eight ball. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, I know that uh, we, we have had some questions on tax rates and, and things of that nature and, and how we set those and more appropriately, um, I know Regina asked me to bring up under old business um, the current fees, we are in fact looking to reevaluate all the fees the town currently has from the various departments and where we find uh, discrepancies we're going to post the notice and bring it before the board for your consideration. Mm, good. Uh, we have not done that now for two years, we do it every two years. So we are, we're looking to do that and probably in the next 30 days you'll probably have something on the agenda that needs to be changed. Uh, we are starting the construction that started today on Ann's Lane. Uh, if, um, since we're going to replace the sewer main out there, we're going to do work on drainage. If you can find another route to get to Route 1 or to get off of Route 1, please take it because there's going to be fairly lengthy delays out there on that particular roadway. We won't finish the final pavement until next year, but we will put a base course of pavement down so it's drivable. We're hoping to get through that before winter. We should be able to do that. But people need to pay attention to what's going on there. It's going to be a much, much nicer street than it is now. And I'm sure the folks there with new sewers will appreciate that as well. Uh, we do have a high tide alert <coughs> uh, commencing September 7th and running through Wednesday morning, September 12th. Uh, tides will be greater than 10 feet in height which means some of our places in town might, might show some flooding. Uh, people need to pay attention to that so that they don't get caught with the flooding in their, on their property. It's important that they do, and it's also important that, uh, and I've been watching the Weather Bureau's forecast right. for the weather, the storm that's mm -hmm. coming, coming inbound into the southern United States in uh, South Carolina and North Carolina. Mm -hmm. If that does come directly into there, we're going to get receive some of the brunt of that later on this week or mm -hmm. perhaps the beginning of next week, yep. and that could cause flooding here. So we need to keep it. People need to keep a close eye on that. If they need flood permits uh, for parking their vehicle someplace else, please call the selectman's office. We'll be happy to issue them permits for that so they can park anywhere they want. We have had <coughs> a uh, request from the United States Navy um, the USS Virginia 
is coming in the fall of this year. We don't know when. Uh, and it's going to be here for two years, and they would like the town of Hampton to play host to the, to the Virginia and its crew. Uh, apparently, uh, we've made a name for ourselves with the U.S. <laughs> Navy and the submarine service. Uh, I did talk to the chairman of the uh, USS Hampton Committee, and uh, he indicates to me that we're going to need some appropriation of funds or availability of funds, and we're going to need more members. Yeah. So if you would like to do this, please advise me you would like to do it, and I will co correspond with... Uh, the people at the Navy base and let them know under what parameters you would like to do this if you would like to do it. Uh, Barber Road will have a temporary closure. Yep. Um, they did they did traffic uh, uh, it's already been done but they did uh, re tree removal up there on September 4th. Mm -hmm. uh, for Johnny Lane we have a Boy Scout project going on there we had to remove a couple of trees and uh, that apparently is, is going quite well at this point in time. Okay. Sewer users, <coughs> user fees, uh, that will be coming to you for review in the next couple of weeks uh, to see whether or not those fees should be increased. We also had a request to find out whether or not uh, we should have sewer user fees rather than having sewer on the tax rate. That's a much more involved process. It requires town meetings approval. It requires certain things to, from, on the part of the board to be diagnosed as to whether, for instance, whether or not the uh, bonding for sewer, which is almost the total bonding of the town, goes to sewer users or whether it continues to be a general obligation bond. That's a town meeting decision. So if that should come about, uh, the board should be prepared to at least review that and to give their, dis give, give their consideration as to whether or not there should be a warrant article for that quite a interesting process. Political well, advertising we talked about and you've talked about legislative review. I'm done. Any questions for the town manager on his? Yes. Actually, I have a suggestion, uh, Fred, on the sewer users. And I know we've had a couple of emails from Peter Tilton. <coughs> We're talking about the landing road area. Right. Um, if you can't find in the in the um, Town records uh, fast. There's a different setup for the landing road people on the south side of landing I'm aware road. Of that. You have the, uh, under I'm John Hangen. Yeah. Okay, you know that part because that's a little different. It, it is a different system, yeah. so they have a different yeah. rate. I just have a question, actually, about all those storms you were talking about. This about three different hurricanes that look like going to be coming in, right? From different places? Hopefully they all go someplace else. Well, hopefully. Right. <laughs> I definitely don't want them here, but as far as the states they do go to, I know that a lot of times some of the uh, businesses around here have always, like I know Desi was a, has done this a lot, supplied trucks and, you know, sent them down. If the town or the community would, could organize something, because we have so many types of community businesses, mm -hmm. you know, in Hampton, I mean, Seabrook, Portsmouth, it's pretty much endless in the seacoast. Like, if the local governments could formally organize something, I bet you that, you know, maybe eventually we could think of being able to do some type of a community municipal slash local business event where we could maybe help some of these guys out. I'd hate to think of the complexity of the intergovernmental agreement that would allow us to do that. Yeah. I'm working well, what if on, just I'm, Hampton did? Well, if it's just one town, that's one thing. I'm working on the intergovernmental agreement with Exeter now for sewer, uh, and we are now six months into it and about 300 pages. Yeah. Well, someone just brought up to me today, because there's a Hampton, Virginia, and I guess Virginia yes, Hampton was going to, and they talk, called me on the phone this morning, and they put the idea in my head, and I just thought I'd bring it up and see what. It's not as simple as it sounds. It's, okay. it, it is very difficult, but we could do it. It just requires time and patience. Right. Okay. Thank you. Well, yeah, I just want to uh, reiterate what you said, Fred, about the September 11th uh, ceremony over yes. the service over at the, uh, the Legion. The, Legion. The people should go to that. that oh. That's so well done, and it, it's so necessary to, to respect the people that we've lost mm -hmm. during the whole war of terror here. So it would be really well worth everybody's effort if at 6 o'clock they can get down there to see that. Uh, the other thing I have, um, and I don't know if to bring it up now or not, we have a letter about uh, a piece of property down the beach. Yes. Mm -hmm. We do. 
Um, yeah. my, my, my thing is, is there anything that we can do or, or can we at least investigate because you have two beautiful properties on either side of that and, and owners who work their butts off yeah. to keep their property beautiful. Yeah. And we got this one thing in the middle that's just a disaster. Yeah, that should be under old business. Okay, well, I'll bring it up under old business. Okay. I'll do that absolutely. Um, what is about the, uh, you mentioned about the, um, the high tide. When was that? We have uh, several days of high tides up through the 12th of this month. Which is the day after tomorrow. Right. And they've so, been, we've been running along, and they've had the notice out now since early so last which week. Which is the highest one? Uh, they're all 10, 10, 10 or 10, 1. So they're all about the same. Uh, the real issue comes as to whether or not uh, there is a, a flood surge at sea mm -hmm. because we have a storm at sea, yeah. or we have e winds from the east coming in uh, off the water, in which case it drives the water in and keeps it here. Yeah. So we have to be careful of those two things. And so we've had sea breezes now for the last two days. And I, re I haven't received any reports of flooding, so I've got my fingers crossed that we're not going to have severe problems. Uh, certainly if we have a storm, like uh, the residual of, of an Atlantic hurricane, uh, we can expect to have flooding. I noticed that they it was coming over the wall today, but not that much. Yes. Well. Yeah. We had that Hampton, Virginia, by the way. The That's, USS Hampton. Um, right. Well, when we had uh, the guy that shot out the abortion clinic, they caught him in Hampton, Virginia. He lived in Hampton, New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was yeah. just on. <laughs> just a little trivia. Can't hey, get away from yeah, Hampton. Yeah, that <laughs> That's where he went. That's the last thing we found out. Oh, I'm sure they didn't want it. <laughs> so, Fred, you were talking about the uh, the USS Virginia. Yes, sir. And they are looking for a host. Town. They are looking for a host community. Now, we had a commission or a committee yeah. for the USS Hampton. We it's did. still Is this something that they might be interested in? I asked the chairman, and he indicated to me that they would need um, a lot of new members. Uh, they're pretty well tuckered out from the last two-year experience, and they need some funds yeah. uh, to help this process along. Yeah, it was just something we should look at for our uh, uh, Warren article next year to maybe maybe yeah. have to be, you know, because it, 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 I think it's an honor to be a host community. Yeah, actually, it is. Yeah. I think it's a real honor, and I think, you know, we have these these sailors come in, and they, they do a lot of volunteer work mm -hmm. in, the, in the community and, and stuff like that. So it might be worth doing a uh, a Warren article for ten, fifteen thousand dollars to be a host community mm -hmm. for different from time to time. Come. Right. Set up in this fund. particular case, the Hampton, the excuse me, the Virginia has requested him to be the, the sponsor, so. which is unusual. So what do we need to do to make well, that happen? You just need to say yes, and we'll put the motion, the gears in motion, and get some people and get I'll some money. I'll Yeah, I'll, I'll second, second it. Oh, right. Right. I have a motion and a second to um, act, as a host act as a host community for the USS Virginia. All those in favor? Unanimous. Who was okay. in charge of that the last time? Uh, I think Mike Edgar is in Mike charge Edgar is. now. Mike Edgar Mike, okay. yeah. Yeah. And he Brian did indicate, Moore. I believe he was, it was at the change of, uh, uh, change of command ceremony for the, uh, yeah. the USS Hampton, which took place recently. Um, and that the former captain for the USS Hampton is moving back to this area. So he may be of help to us as well. Oh, good. So. Did we, did we actually vote? Yes, we voted. Okay. Yes. I, I uh, wasn't able to ask all my questions of the manager. I just have two more. Um, on the police department and the um, emergency management, Yes. you need to include the fire department as well, both departments. Well, they're always included because the fire chief is the deputy emergency manager. Right, director. that's sort of it, but we yeah. need to make sure both of them are on top of it. And the signage from uh, Rayanne Dion of the Conservation Commission on the um, posting signs in the town forest um, showing the bylaws and the uh, no target shooting and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And you did uh, tell her to uh, go ahead and, and uh, you know, review it, but they are trying to get signage up, which is good. You need to tell people what's going on. Right. My admonition to them was make sure it's on town property. Right. Absolutely. It needs to happen. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Old business. Anybody have anything on the old business? Yep. Good. Okay. We had a notice from a gentleman, and I think Fred re um, responded to him on a potential rail, on dealing with the quote rail trail in Hampton. Um, I, at some point in time, think we need to discuss that. The old railroad right of way, I think, should be kept for drainage and stuff. I don't want to see anybody actually building anything or doing anything permanent with that land. So that's something I'd like to hold up for discussion. We, uh, we did pass a zoning article a number of years ago, and the only thing that land can be used for is trans transportation and utility purposes. Uh, so you can't build anything on it even if you wanted to because Excellent. it's a violation of zoning. Uh, we are currently, we did receive um, a copy of the proposed new rail trail agreement from the Regional Planning Commission, and we are reviewing that now. Okay. Uh, and we'll have a recommendation within the next week or two for the board with regards to that particular proposal. Okay. Next thing I have is uh, a round of applause to Jen Hale in Public Works. She came in and saw us about Anne's Lane. The next thing you know, the notice is up and they're already doing the project. I have to say, I think that's the fastest project that's ever been done in this community. Um, the threatened litigation and, oh, uh, ignoring that for the moment, Rye Zoning Board of Adjustment, the, the Verizon Tower applications, does that impact us in any way? No, but the statute requires that any town within 10 air miles of an application for a cell tower or communication system must be notified. So they had so to notify So we're within us. 10 air miles. Okay, and my final If it's that big, we really have to worry about it, but it really isn't so. Yeah, my final uh, comment <laughs> is what are they doing in Concord? Do we have to send the armed forces up there to get them to sit down for a meeting? They fob off, and we set a date, and then they fob off something else. And they, are they chicken or what? What what are we going to do to get these people down here to talk? I think it's a matter of them having a hundred and some odd parks and in, in, in a hundred and some odd different municipalities uh, that they're trying to work with, and uh, there's only so many hours in the day, in the month, in the year. And yes, they'd like to come talk to us. They'd like, like to talk to the board. Um, but they just need some dates for the month of October. I yep. think that's it. They want to come. Okay. Well, A, there hasn't been any increase in parks that I know of. They're the same old parks that have been there. And number two, uh, they ought to be prepared to run our park, like all the other parks, like a business. That's my comment. All right. So, any other old business? I'm going to bring that other thing up under new business because it's okay, not all there. So. Okay. Let's see, I just have one thing. Yes. Yeah. She already asked my real tail question. So, um, on recycling, is the town recycling right now? We are. Okay, but we're not paying $425. We're, we're expecting um, a new list from our vendor because okay. uh, ah. the... Uh, our good friends in China who are taking all the recycling <laughs> have decided that they're not going to take certain items. Oh. We're looking for the expanded list of that and, and going to uh, provide that to all of the people in the community, either on Channel 22 or through handouts or some of the means, okay. so okay. that people will know what's going on. And yes, there will be a sub substantial decrease in the amount of items that we're allowed to recycle. We're we going to have notices print out or stickers to go on people's carts? Well, I'm not sure we're going to put stickers on the carts. Uh, we, we're looking into that. Uh, unfortunately, those stickers are not cheap. They're very uh, expensive, and they're not certainly not in the budget. But that doesn't mean that we can't uh, get handouts to people, leave them with their carts so they know what's going on, and publish it okay. in the paper and put it, put notices uh, on the website, yeah. as well as Channel 22. Because informing people is the hard part. Right. We're just the way to be informed ourselves because yeah. waste management is still finding out things themselves. Huh. Okay. New business. Wait, I'll go for the old business. Um, 
Would it be appropriate to um, send a letter of appreciation to Bill Watson, I guess maybe his name is William Watson, um, that he has done so much for Hampton all the years I've been here, and he works with the state, uh, what is the DOT, I believe. Right. And he is just the nicest guy. And had, I think he, uh, the state's going to be lost without him. I think it's a bad thing for Hampton and every other town mm-hmm. because he knows how to handle both his job for the state, even though we might not always like it. Uh, but he has such a nice way of doing it, and he's very respectful of everything about Hampton. And he's retiring and uh, moving away to Canada. Wow. And you know, and his wife died last year, so it's a big thing for you know. He has two little kids, and he's just the best person. And I've worked with him a lot, and I think we should send him a letter of appreciation for all that he's done for Hampton. I'll we send him that motion. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Great idea. And I have worked with Bill for years in other towns, and, and he's always been right there and helping every chance he gets yeah. an opportunity to do that. Absolutely. No business. Street name for public works facility. What's what's bringing this public, up? Well, public works seems to be the whipping boy as far as delivery of packages to the town because... <laughs> <laughs> They're the other ones who have all the equipment to disperse it and so on and so forth. So what they'd like to do is they would like to, one, design something that will have a good number sequence for the buildings and will able, be able to put them into the 911 system with the state so that when there is a call that comes in, if it's at the wastewater treatment plant, there are a number of buildings there. They'd all be numbered. So as long as they give them the number and the street it's located on, which in this case would be McGrath Court, McGrath was the founder of the wastewater treatment plant, for a superintendent, or the other road, the Horseshoe Road, would be Public Works Way, and there are a number of buildings on that. Each one would have a separate number, so it will allow police, fire, ambulance, whatever, to get there in a, in a bigger hurry. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised how many people do not know where Hard Odds Way is. Yeah, and and this would allow us to add to that base for public safety agencies, as well as those people who do emergency out of town responses for us which is very important, too. So that's why they want to come up with some definitive way to address those issues at Public Works. You're in favor of this? I am. I'll make that motion. Uh, I'll second. I'll I'll make motion second. If you you look on the memo that we got, uh, three lines up from the bottom, there's a little misspelling there, but I think we know who was being referenced. But that's an excellent idea. And by the way, um, McGrath Court, Levitt McGrath was the first public works director. Yes. So we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Good job on that. Okay. Yes. Number two is preliminary design downtown underground wiring funding return. Mm. Uh, We have finished that program and uh, it is not apparently going to move forward. (laughs) <laughs> uh, because of the costs that are involved in actually implementing the program, but we have done the study as required by the town. And there's $256,124 remaining unexpended in that appropriation. Mm-hmm. As you will remember, and this has been brought up on a couple of occasions in, in sort of semi public, that the Hampton Experience Hampton donated $30,000 this effort. Mm-hmm. Which was 10% of yep. what? Which 10% of the total. And, and the question is. If you don't do something to do a pro ratio for returning that 10% portion of what's left uh, to experience Hampton, not to exceed $30,000, uh, then this money will go to the unreserved fund balance at the end of the year, and there won't be a refund for the yeah. unexpended portion of their donation. Mr. Chairman, also moved that we do the refund. It's only pro fair. Rate it for the pro rate it, and it's only fair. I'll second that. All right. Pro, the, the pro rate for the thirty for the ten ten mm-hmm. percent of the ten percent of the three hundred. So pro rating that right? That yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll yeah. second that. Well, she already seconded. She did it. second oh. it. So any other discussion? All those in yeah. favor? Unanimous. Good. Good idea. Thank you. Next one is assessing contract purchasing po- per- policy and purchasing procedure waiver seven eighteen five one policy waivers. You know. Authorization for the town manager to sign the contract. I'll defer to the deputy town manager. Deputy town manager. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm here to report back on uh, prior direction of the board um, with regard to, as uh, folks may know, 
our uh, full-time assistant, Mr. Taker, has given his notice and has gone on to pursue um, employment in the private sector, which leaves us with the challenge of filling our assessor. Um, in the research we've done, it's our recommendation that the board vote not to fill that position as a full-time position, but we uh, engage in a contract with a private firm to perform those services, a contracting assessing position. As a part of that, um, I would ask that you authorize you also um, waive the purchasing policy uh, in order to allow the, the town manager to sign a contract with that group, uh, MRI, Municipal Resources, Inc. We've gone out and negotiated that on your behalf. Um, it is what we recommend. Uh, that will give us our assessing needs taken care of, and then we will seek to have a reorganization of that department um, and uh, ask for your permission to hire a full-time assessing clerk. Currently, it's part-time and move that to full-time. So if you want me to go through each of those one at a time for the board to vote or answer any questions you may have. Well, I'll make a motion to uh, to waive the policy. Okay. I'll second that. Yeah, I'll second those. I, I do would like to hear for the public benefit, just have the deputy uh, managers give a something little. Something separate. A little recap. On the overall what we're doing? Well, yeah, go, going down. The motion is for the purchasing. We have a motion policy. to waive the purchasing policy. So oh, okay. we have a motion and second. All those in favor, unanimous. Okay. Um, and the second would be then to uh, ask the board to authorize uh, a reorganization of that department and authorize the town manager and myself to go ahead and work with the current employee uh, to amend the job description to take on the additional responsibilities as a result of this reorganization. Um, and to uh, negotiate a commensurate salary with those additional responsibilities. And that would be under RSA 37 colon 6. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And Just finally, that. seek the board's authorization, <coughs> pardon me, the uh, board's authorization to uh, hire a full time assessing clerk for what is currently an authorized part time position. Uh, <coughs> and we will do that in the best interest of the town as quickly as we can. Make that motion. I'll second. I have a question. Well, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I have a question. Questions. Do we expect uh, the financial impact to this? So no. all told in the end, doing the contract and what the adjustments are, I expect we'll realize savings in the vicinity of sixty to $68,000 a year on an annual basis. Right, depending on how everything Yeah, it's goes. when we finalize everything. But that's the ballpark that I anticipate we will save. Okay. Thank you very much. Would, would you confirm the length of the contract and when it starts, that type Certainly. of thing? Certainly. So um, the public and again, knows. Well, the reason we have contracted just in general with MRI is there are a limited number of companies that can handle. We are one of the larger communities yeah. with number of parcels and the complexity. Um, we have gone out and, and spoken, and in fact, in this case, uh, Mr. Tinker is going with the company that, that we are going to contract with, and there'll be a an obvious hand-in-hand uh, -hand that'll be helpful to us in that transition. Mm -hmm. We'll have a larger team available to us to deal with it. Uh, the contract we're looking at will be a three-year contract, um, yes. again, as a um, uh, prorated for 2018, full, I think it's uh, 32500 per year um, in 2019, 20, and 21. Great. We have an escape clause that if after 60 days it's not working for the party, we can give notice and, and move on to another uh, scenario if we wish. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also some other elements to the contract that uh, once it's signed and executed and finalized, it will be a public document that everybody's able to see if they wish. So instead of what we've been used to was a full-time assessing officer, then the assistant to him, and a part-time clerk, we'll be down to two positions, the, um, the regular... Uh, yes, ma'am. Whatever. So yeah, it's, whatever. it would be expressed as two and a half, you generally two and a half full-time equivalents will be two full-time equivalents right. at a contracted basis. Right. Thank you. And, and the reason you asked for the waiver was because MRI has all the software that we currently use? So it, one, of the other, one of the other vendors would require some software adjustments, but MRI uh, does not require a change in our software. They have numerous other communities that they operate on. Again, there's a number of companies that provide that, but given the complexity of our work, the number of parcels we have, uh, <coughs> doing the research that I have, um, there's really two major players in the state that can do that work. Um, mm -hmm. And my research and that of the manager has led us to MRI, and that is the reason for the policy waiver because, again, it's $33,000 of a contract we're doing. 
um, that it's in the best interest of the town to go in that way, given all sum total of the parts here. And it shouldn't interfere if someone has a question going into the office. They will get help, either from MRI, if it's a big problem, or just for the... The As it works currently, folks who have issues come in, they speak yep. to the person in the window, and we get them the most qualified person to answer their question, and we hope right. that that will go on without change. There Excellent. may be a little bit of a delay where Mr. Tinker, if it was a direct assessing question for him, often is in the office, there may be a slight delay in that. Right. But again, when we're reducing costs, there may be some impact on service, but I don't, we don't expect it to be significant. So we'll still be fulfilling the mission of the assessing office? Absolutely. Okay. So Thank you. Motion and second. All those in favor? And this motion is to authorize the manager to sign the contract. Contract and, and for the for and the reorganize that department. The reorganize the department with a new with okay. the additional full time employee from part time. Correct. Yes. I unanimous. Right? Yep. All yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Unanimous. And okay. the new business, are you taking one more? I have new, new business too. Yeah. I have new business. Start over here. He, okay. He, as I said before, you received a, a letter. Yes, sir. From uh, from the Morris Law Firm representing East Street Properties LLC, I guess, mm -hmm. about the uh, the colony, right? The old That's correct. The colony motel, mm -hmm. and they're asking if there's anything that can be done with that. Now, I'm just saying that, first of all, that, yeah. that both sides of that property maintain right. really beautiful right. property, and they really work very hard to keep up their property, mm -hmm. and it's it's. You know, not only an eyesore, but it's obviously becoming a health hazard yep. and a fire hazard. And is there anything we can do? Well, they cite RSA 155B, and I've operated that statute before. It's in this particular case, it's a very difficult problem because the owner of the property is in custody uh, oh. because of his right. his current physical inability to to operate. He has not given his permission to anyone to act in his behalf, and he's not now, he cannot legally now give that because of the situation he's in. So, this is going to be, and I've given you all a copy of RSA 155B. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, read through it. It's, it's, it's very interesting reading. Uh, having been through this process at least once before, and actually, I've been through it twice. Um, Basically, what they're saying is that the building cannot be secured. They want the town to pay to tear it down. That's a very, very substantial expense. And anything that's of value in the, within the property would have to be removed and sold under court supervision. It's a lengthy proposition. Um, town Council needs to review this, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, my gut feeling is that... Um, yeah, the property needs to be better secured, but it's going to require a court order, I believe, to do that. Wow. And my feeling would be that every door and window in the building should be boarded up. Yeah. And the police should be inspecting this several times a day, yeah. uh, simply for security reasons. So we've had people that have been going in and out, I understand, and using the place as a place to crash and to oh. do drugs or smoke or whatever. Oh. And uh, I don't know that as actual factual evidence, but it's being sort of pushed in that direction. Um, this is a lengthy problem. It's going to take a long period of time to do what the statute provides to do. It's nothing that can be done in a big hurry because of the current medical situation with the owner. Uh, so my suggestion is that we get together with counsel. He'll be back in a few days. Um, we look at petitioning the Superior Court uh, under the statute for the ability to go in and board the building up completely. We can recover that cost with a lien against the structure. Mm -hmm. That will allow us not to have to tear the building down, which is a considerable expense. And I, because of the size of the structure, I wouldn't be at all hesitant to say that we're probably spending a quarter million dollars of tax money to do this or more. That's a lot of, a lot of bread, as they say. Um, if the building can be saved and secured without having to do that, and there are several people who are interested in buying it, you see what the court will allow us to do. If we're going to have to go to court get permission to do anything at all. We don't even have permission to be on the property at this point because there's no one who can give us permission to be on the property legally. You know, I just want to, can I may? Yep. I want to stay in touch with the people that down there that are involved that, that 
want to have something done. And I mean, we don't, I mean, it's it, it's obviously a, a no. health and safety and, a, and an eyesore. We don't want it to turn in like the, the gas station on the corner up here that the first thing people yeah. see when they come into town is yeah. an abandoned gas station right. sitting there with nobody doing anything about it. You know, so, so I really want us to look into it thoroughly and make sure that we've covered every base we can to see what kind of help we can give. Yeah. It's a very difficult problem. There's no question yeah. about it. In case of vandalism, which might result in fire, how, what risk would the town be if we are still tangled up in this legal whatever where you can't do and you can't do? Without the jurisdiction of the court, there's nothing we can do. We're not liable or responsible for anything. Okay. We have to get a court order. But and that's just the bottom line. Now, anybody can set any building on fire they want to yeah. simply because they want to. We're hoping that doesn't happen. We don't normally have fire bugs in town. We don't want any. But where you have two adjacent properties that are seriously at risk at this point in time. You well, know, they're always seriously at risk even when the building occupied properly. Well, that's, yeah. They're just too close to each other. Mm. And that's the old style construction and that's yeah. what you get with old style construction. So we're just going to well, get well, There are people who are interested in buying it, perhaps to tear it down, to rehabilitate it, to do all kinds of other things right. with it. But, but but they're more at risk when it's unoccupied yeah. right, and run There's down. There's absolutely a concern there. Yes. Yeah, right. a risk. That's our concern. Can we to answer your point, we've been in contact with the, the, the letter writer, actually, been in contact a number of times about this issue. So we are going to maintain that contact as okay. we move forward. And they realize that this is a challenging position given the circumstances. Okay. But I think our first step here is to go to court and get the request to... Yeah allow us to secure that building. We should talk to his attorney first. His attorney does not represent him in this matter, but he did represent him in everything else he was doing. Yeah. He just didn't have authority on the building to do things with it. So I think I think we probably would have a better understanding of talking to his counsel, who we've been dealing with from yeah. time to time, and then uh, jointly together go to court to see if we can save the building, board it up, do whatever needs to be done and yeah. secure it so it's in good condition. And even if we even if we ended up having to tear it down, we could still put a lien on the piece of property. Automatically it would be lien with a court order. Correct, okay. so that we would get our money back. We need we to would. talk with our own lawyer. We yeah. do. Yeah, yes. well, I, I understand. Yeah, absolutely. I think we should bring it to discuss it when he's here. Fred, in a situation like this, is there any way to expedite it? I know you're working with the council, the other gentleman. But is there any way to plead to the court that this is critical? Can we expedite the... Well, it's only going to go just so fast. as a procedure of the statute, and we're going to have to follow the procedure. Uh, uh, the court's going to want to review the property when it gets to them. Uh, uh, it's not something that it's, you just walk in the court tomorrow morning and say, well, you have a problem, give me an order. It doesn't work that way. We just uh, it's, it's Read the statute. It is involved. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it would be it would be easier to get the court's permission to secure the structure for now right. than it would be to just start the process of, of going in and just trying to tear it down. So we do need to have our lawyer here to discuss this. We do. Yes. Do an emergency request. Too. So when he gets back, we'll we'll talk. Well, we're going to start on this before he gets back, Good. so we'll have a lot of information gathered, so he'll have it at his disposal, and we can we can move more quickly on this. Good. Any other new business? Yes. Oh, well, go ahead, and then I'll. All right. I just wanted to say that I submitted to the Board of Selectmen today a project that I'm going to be publicizing. It's what I've been working on as part of my graduate studies, and it's on regional desalination, and it's yep. an idea. I mean, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a hydrogeologist, but I've been doing a lot of research on it. Hmm. And since I'm a Hampton Selectman, I wanted to announce it at the meeting here tonight and it pretty much just talks about using existing infrastructure that nearby communities have including Hampton. I uh, specifically talk about Hampton, Seabrook and Portsmouth so I would like to... Uh, I read it. I figured you would. <laughs> <laughs> I would like What'd to... What did you get uh, for a grade? Huh? What did you get for a grade? Well I got an A- minus, but I've changed it since then so... <laughs> But, um, change the grade or change the report? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure. Probably both. It could be, anywhere, you know, it could be <laughs> anywhere between an A and F right now, I guess. Might <laughs> but, go. but I just wanted to uh, let the board know because I am going to that conference next week, so I'm probably going to be, I'm definitely going to be getting out to Aquarian and Eversource. Eversource is a huge part of it mm. since they have all the money. So, um, 
I just wanted to let you guys know about it. It talks about a few different types that it looks like could be uh, doable. Reverse osmosis, which is pretty much taking wastewater and recycling it into drinkable water. And then seawater desalination, yeah. of course, we've all heard about that. And then there's also nuclear desalination. So we do have a power plant that they're trying to keep open. So that's all. I just wanted to uh, bring it up and let my board know about it first. I hope the camera caught Rusty's face. <laughs> this crap. Uh, okay. I have one more for um, new business, if we can. So do we, would you like a vote on it, or just, like, just yeah. let the vote? I wish, I'm going to start getting it out to people and like, edit it one more time, but great. I just wanted to let you guys know about it first. And All right. Well, thank yeah. you. I'd give it to I think it's a good idea there. as well. Fred, uh, your memo, September 10. The LED street lighting for the public works, how fast do we have to work on that? I think it's a good idea. And now, stressing. They're already this, working on it. This is not what you call ornamental lighting, right? It's replacing the current. Ornamentals in the eye of the beholder. Right. <laughs> no, but this is this is putting new bulbs in where the old. New fixtures new and bulbs. New fixtures and bulbs. Right. Okay, just, so. We just have replacing the existing fixture, fixtures with a new fixture. With a different type of. But I think this is an excellent idea. So we'll I see when the report comes back. I appreciate the memo. Okay, thank you. Anything else that new business? Seeing none. Closing comments. Do a motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn at uh, 20:07. Have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Channel 21. Greenwich Mean Time. Wow. That's it. <laughs>